blurry, isn't it? Oh, now it's not even blurry. Better? Is it blurry? Like the where it says simplify? No? Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. How about this one? Do you guys have questions? Anybody? Did you guys do it like this? Did you multiply? Like, here's what I would do. I would take all of these numbers, everything, like the whole thing, and multiply everything by 18 first. Oh, wait, never mind. I take it back. It's not an e I thought it was an equation. Oops. Oops. No. So, common denominator. All right. 2x. No. 6x. Man. Plus 10x minus 5x over 18. Is that what you did? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm really tired. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. All right. So, so you have to multiply both sides by 12, basically, right? But it reduces, so this one you multiply by 3 over 1, this one you multiply by 4 over 1, after it reduces, right? But what you're really doing is multiplying both sides by 12, right? And so 3x minus 6 equals 8x plus 20, and then you solve that. Is that good or no? Yeah. Is that good? Okay. So... Just to make sure we're all on the same page. If you got it wrong, you already wrote down the correct answer and you marked yourself wrong. And so we're just kind of going over. Like if you did this, you would only, you'd probably only lose one point. It's a three point problem. If you did this, that's the hard part. Like if you got this on your paper, you'd probably only lose one point if you did not get the right answer. And other acceptable answers would be 26 over five or negative five and one fifth, right? Because they're equivalent. Questions on number two? No? Christina, no questions? Okay. Hector, no questions? How about this one? This one I'd multiply everything by six. Because it's all equal. Because watch what happens when you multiply everything by six. What's that? Six times two thirds? Four. And six times five, six? <coughs> five equals huh 3x oh yeah this does equal 9 you're right but I meant this times that and then you see how easy that is to solve yeah that's how I would do it anybody do it that way nobody did it that way I taught you that August of 2014 <laughs> and today is late February 2016. So that was a long time ago, right? Right. Wait a minute. So since you didn't do it this way, do you see why that works? Do you see how I did it? Yeah? Okay. Oh. Whoa. Huh. Whew. Hee. Oh. Yikes. Okay, wait, I think this one's easy. I think this one's easy. I think the trick is, you see that it's a division right there? Can you do it like this? Can you do that? And you see how the denominators are equal? So 5 times what is 40? 8. That's weird. That's only a one-point problem. Wow. Good? No questions so far? Okay. Okay. Is this one tricky? Did you have to... Yeah, you do. You have to divide both sides by a negative, don't you? Yeah, and that's why the, the sign is switched. Do you guys have questions on this one? No? Nobody? Sophia? Okay. How about this one? Yeah? Okay. I would multiply both sides by 35. Both sides. Here and here. For the same reason that I multiplied on the other problem, that I multiplied everything by 6. 
because it gets rid of the fraction. Do you see? So when I multiply this side by 35, do you see how the, it's like 35 over 1, of course, right? Do you see how 7 reduces with the 35 right here? So really what ends up happening is this. And do you see the 5 reduces? Can I just write 14? Because it's going to be 5 goes into 35 7 times. 7 times 2 is 14. You should be taking notes, not lotioning your hands, silly goose. Did you get this one right? Okay, then. Did you do it this way? No. Oh, this was easier. Because watch. Like, you could actually have done this in your head. 10 minus 25 x, right? You have to subtract 10 from both sides. Is that right? Is that good? And then you just divide. Okay. Sophia, wh what was your question about that one? <coughs> you know what you did? Okay. So if you get it wrong and you know what you did, you should write it down, like what you did, because you're gonna you can use these to study. Yes, sir. Four. Should be fourteen. Oh. Right. But it's negative 25 times x. Yeah. So did you have negative 25 right there, or did you just forget to write it? Oh, yeah, you didn't distribute. You just multiplied this one. Right here. Yeah, so so if I, were, if I did that, then what I would write down, if I were you, I would write down, be careful to distribute. Okay. Jesse, I was thinking about this today. I was thinking that education should make you look at what you did, like like look at your mistakes and look at what you're not doing right and learn how to be better from it. And so if I don't get you guys to do that, then I didn't give you an education. And so that's what we're doing right now. I'm helping you guys look at what you did wrong and learn from it so you do better. Because math isn't something you can teach, it's just something you can learn. Whoa. Math is not something you can be, it's, something, it's not something that can be taught. Math cannot be taught, it can only be learned. History can be taught. A language can only be learned, cannot be taught. If a language could be taught, then when you took German, you would be fluent, fluent in German when you left. If you took Spanish in high school, and you didn't speak Spanish at home, you would be fluent in Spanish, you could just speak it. It doesn't work that way. It can be learned, can't be taught. Okay. Ready? <gasps> Did you get... Is that how you did that one? Yeah? Okay. Okay, check this out. You have to make a decision here. You have to decide which of these X's are you going to move. I moved the smallest one. 6 is smaller than 8. So then I get... 2x and then minus, is that 47? Is that right? Is that right? Yeah? Divide by 2, divide by 2. So if you got that, I imagine, but you didn't get the answer right, I imagine you only lose one point. I also imagine that most people didn't turn this around. Like, like so x is less than negative 47 over 2. This says negative 47 over 2 is greater than x. This says x is less than negative 47 over 2. The same, same statement. Jesse is shorter than Isaac. Isaac is taller than Jesse. Same statement. Why do I need to turn it around? Um, well, I could have written it like this. That's the same thing. Yeah. Are we good? Karima, any questions so far? Did you miss anything on the first two pages? Yeah, what? Yeah, oh, just something silly? Okay. And how about this one? Something silly? Yeah? Who's got questions on number seven? Edgar, no questions on number seven? Really? America, no questions? April, no questions? Ruby, no questions? Ruby, before the year is over, you have to ask one question in class. 
You can't go through two years of class without asking a question during class. You have to ask a question. Same with Mia. Like she has to ask a question to me during class before the year's over. You know what I would do if I were one of those students? Right now, I would say, why? <laughs> ah, but it's too late. Because then, yeah. All right. How about this? Oh, yeah, number eight. Yeah, you could do like this, like, okay, so Cambridge doesn't teach you this formula. We did not learn this form formula. We did not learn that formula because that comes from the Pythagorean theorem anyway. And that's what you do here. You, it's just the Pythagorean, form, the Pythagorean theorem, sorry. That's where this comes from. This is the distance formula. You're not taught it. I don't expect you to know it. I don't expect you to remember it. But that's how the Pythagorean theorem, theorem works. So like if you were to like sketch a little picture, so you went negative 1 and 4, right? And then you went negative 4 and 8. Negative 4 and 8. Like, like let's say that's right there. Oh, sorry. Can't see it. Right? And you had to figure out the distance between the two. If you drew a right triangle, you could figure out the distance between these two would be 4. And the distance between these two, wouldn't that be 3? 3, 4, 5, right triangle. See how that works? This is way easier than that. This is the same thing. I, that's one of the things I really like about Cambridge, is that it makes you understand where stuff comes from, instead of just giving you the easy way out. Because you'll never remember this. Like, you might memorize it, but then you're going to forget a whole bunch of other stuff. Whereas if you just understand, it's easy to remember. It's not even remembering. Do you remember how to tie your shoes? Because I don't. I just do it. Do you remember how, like, could you tell me how to tie your shoes? Could you give me a list of steps? Like this? You could? You could teach me how to tie... Wait, what? SpongeBob. Okay. All right. That's funny. SpongeBob. All right. Oh, look, I got a new water bottle filled, filled with fresh student tears. Look, I got a new water bottle filled with fresh student tears. That's glass. All right. How about this one? You know, for this one, I'm surprised this is only worth three points. You know, for this one, you got to find the slope first, right? And that's the difference of the y's divided by the difference of the x's. And you have to reduce. I have a feeling a lot of people left this. It's a good thing I didn't grade your work, because if I saw you did that, I would break two of your fingers on each hand. <laughs> Because that is just ridiculous. That would only be acceptable if you were a fifth grader. Not acceptable. Good? Bad. Ice cream? Ebola. Good? Bad. Okay? Then, let me show you the easy way. You know how this is what your answer is going to look like, right? Well, you know what M is. It's one half. And then you can just pick. Oh, actually, you know what? This one's so easy. But let's say I didn't notice. You can just pick. You have an X and a Y. You have another X and a Y. It doesn't matter which one you use. Either one's fine. But now that I look at it, I see why it's only worth three points. This one is a Y intercept because X is zero. But what people always do, like I bet, I bet there's people that wrote this. I bet there's people that wrote that. Because they just picked a random Y. It has to be the y-intercept. Anyway, so here's how it would work. Like, let's say that let's say you didn't have this y-intercept given to you. Let's just say it was like another number. Then what you would do is you would pick either one, and you'd plug in x is 6, and y is 8, and then you solve for b. Do you see? Half of 6 is 3. You would subtract 3 from both sides, and you get 5 is equal to b. 
And then all you gotta do is you plug in your slope, you plug in your y intercept and y and x, those are the dependent and independent variables. Are we good? Yeah? How many of you guys got that one right? Okay. All right. If you didn't get it right, you shouldn't just write down the math, you should also write down a note. Like, this is what I missed, this is what I forgot, or this is what I need to see. Because this isn't the math, actually. The math is what you, th is a, like, in your head. That's why math can only be learned, not taught. This is not the math. If math could be taught, you'd learn it from a book. Right, America? Can you learn it from a book? Me either. I've tried. I've learned a lot from a book, but it, I always have to, like, take it and go talk to people. Yeah. <gasps> okay. Oh, yeah. Do you guys know midpoint? Yeah? Half of the x's for the x-coordinate, half of the y's for the y-coordinate. So, right, you add them up, right? 8 divided by 2 is 4 for the x. Let's see. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Right? Yeah. We're good? Yeah, Christina? See? You're going to do good on your test on Friday, Christina. I know it. All right. Please tell me you didn't miss this one. A, B is seven units. Why is this important? Why is that important? Alexis, who should we call on that will tell us why that's important? Me? Okay, why? That's right. Yeah, because this is the y-intercept of 3 right here, and so if you go down 7 units, that's how you find out that that's negative 4. That was the best answer I heard all day. Not the math answer, when I asked who should I call on, and you said, me. That was the best answer of the day. Don't be jealous, man. Other people can be good, too. Don't be a solosa. All right? And then the slopes are the same because it's parallel. So do you see how, like, every piece of information you have to use? I know you've been in the class for a year and a half now, but it's so different than the previous seven grades of school. Where in the seven grades of school, all you got to do is look, look here, and then you can figure out what to do. But in Cambridge, you have to look everywhere. Oh, no, eight years of school. Oh, nine, if you count kindergarten. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, preschool, too. Okay, find the coordinates where C crosses the x-axis. Wait, how do you do that? How do you find this? The C is right here, correct? How do you find that coordinate? Yeah, so you put 0 for Y, and you solve. Why do you do that? Say that again? Because this is where it crosses the x-axis. That's the x-intercept. And for the x-intercept, y is always 0. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, boy. All right. April cracked me up on number 12. April was freaking out. She couldn't do it. She's like, what do I do? And then she said, I tell her. I told her more than I should have told her. She's like writing down total nonsense. And I slapped her a little bit. <laughs> not, phys not, not, not literally, but figuratively. I'm like, April, wake up. I like grabbed her shoulders and shook her awake. But not physically, just, you know, figuratively. And I'm like, April, calm down. You can do this. You know how to do this. It's the freaking Pythagorean thing. Because she was writing 7x squared without parentheses. And then I was like trying to correct her, and she's just like all over the place. But then after I woke her up, she's like, oh, duh. She did know how to do it. She didn't even need help. She just thought she couldn't. She didn't believe in herself. And that's the problem. You guys know all of this. You just have to be able to recall it. That's the hard part. But don't freak out. You got this. So if you don't write the parentheses, you're probably going to get it wrong. Maybe you won't, but you probably will. So it should be 49x squared plus, oh, I don't know. What is that? 400 and what? Five what? 
576, that's ridiculous. Equals 2250? 2250. Whoa. And then you solve it and you get. Oh no, you solve for x. What do you get when you solve? Like to calculate the perimeter, you have to solve this for x, right? Oh, you get 6, don't you? <laughs> anyway, so then you plug in 6 for x and you add it all up and you get the perimeter. Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. So, you guys know that I was at a funeral on Saturday for my wife's grandfather. And I gave the eulogy. It was a lot harder to do than I thought. It was a really cool funeral. I got to tell you, they were there was a bag. They had bagpipes because the guy was in the the guy was in the fire department for 50 years. So they had a, an official ceremony. It was really cool. Bagpipes were playing. I'll tell you what, uh, everybody should have bagpipes play at their funeral because it was badass. I mean, it was really cool. And it was like super. Like the sound they make is so sad, but it was so cool. So anyway, like at the end, they're lowering him into the grave, and then the bagpipe player starts walking away, so it gets quieter and quieter and quieter as he goes in, down in the grave. That was really, that was really cool. And it's sad, of course, but it's cool. Yeah. Right. So anyway, um, it, was, uh, it was a really hard funeral. Like, it was really sad. Everybody was really upset. And then I get home, and when, like last night, my wife and I were like, oh, God, we're finally home. Trying to, relax, trying to relax, trying to rest. Like, we had to drive 500 miles yesterday. And so we're just like unwinding. And then my grandmother calls me. And I thought she had had a stroke and was calling for help. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, I can't do this again. And she lives here. I'm really close with my grandmother. And so I'm like, I told my wife, I gotta go check on my grandmother. And she's like, okay, I'm coming with you. So the whole time I didn't tell her what I heard on the phone. I just heard like mumbling, like <sighs> breathing, like <sighs> And then the only word I could understand was Tucson. And I was like, Tucson. I could barely understand it. So, like, I'm driving over there. I'm telling her to call my uncle who lives next door to her. And the whole time I'm like, she's had a stroke. She's going to die. Or she's an old lady that can't operate an iPhone. One of the two. <laughs> or she's an 88-year-old woman who can't operate an iPhone. It was the second one. <laughs> She, she did the same thing to my uncle who lives next door. She's like trying to use her phone to call somebody. She accidentally called him and thought she hung up but just moved the screen over. So she was on a new screen but it was still in the background. So what I heard was her cussing at her phone under her breath because she called me on accident. She didn't know she called me and she was trying to move the, like get rid of the screen so she could find whoever she wanted. Yeah. So then I, I, like, I called my, we finally got a hold of my uncle like we can, I hung up on her, like when she was making all those weird noises. Tried calling her back, but you know she couldn't even hear it because she didn't have her hearing aids in. And anyway, so then when I finally called her, she's like, "Well, hello." She had no idea about it. I got halfway there. Yeah, because she lives like I live over by Garrett's, and she lives over on the other side of the, like up where Eureka Drive. Uh, true story. Okay. Oh. Hey, how many of you guys had trouble with number 13? Yeah. Okay, shapes. Shapes. They cause a lot of trouble. You have to break the shape. Is it 16.2? Okay. Okay. You have to break the shape apart into pieces that you know. Okay? You know rectangles and you know circles, but you might not see this as a circle. If this is a rectangle, is that true that that's 90 degrees? Then wouldn't it also be true this is 90 degrees? If this is 90 degrees, how much of a circle is this part? One fourth. So it's 90 degrees out of 360 is a quarter. You know how to do stuff with circles. You know how to do stuff with rectangles. That's the thing you have to see. Okay? So... We have to find the surface area. Well, the area of this part is easy, right? Mm -hmm. Area is just length times width. The area of this part is trickier. How do you find the area of the circle? 
pi r squared. So this time, we only have a quarter of it, so it's going to be divided by 4. But you need, if you're writing this down, you need to write down why are you dividing it by 4. That's the important part. Why are you dividing it by 4? If you got it wrong, that's probably what you missed. So don't just write down this. Write down why is it being divided by 4? Why is this on the paper? Everybody always writes down this like it's the math. This is the math. Wait, why is the radius 0.8? Because it's the height of the rectangle, right. Yeah. Yep. This is not the math. It's the hardest part to do is to write this down. But the math is actually figuring out that this is what you need to write down. Alexis, did you get that right? Shabala mano. Did you get it right, Mia? Shabala mano. Okay. Any other questions on number 13? Okay. Number 14. Let's see. The diagram represents a rectangular gate. There are eight lengths of wood. The most confusing part is which are the eight lengths of wood. It's not obvious, but if you count this way, one, two, three, right? The diagonal is the third. And then four, five, six, seven, eight. Do you see how there's eight pieces of wood? You see that, Isaac? You want me to show you again? Okay. Watch. The, slide, the, the horizontal rails. One, two, three, four, five. Two sides, six and seven, and a diagonal, eight. You see how there's eight pieces of wood now? Nope. It's not, it's not like one, two, three, four. Each line is supposed to be a piece of wood. I know. That's confusing. I don't know how you would know that other than when you count it up, it doesn't work any other way. Okay. And so it gives you the dimensions, and you have to calculate the total length of wood. So, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five of these pieces, right? And those are 3.5 each. Is that true? And then there are two of these, and those are 1.5 meters each. And then the diagonal, the way you find the diagonal is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? So it's going to be, and there's only one of them. Oh, right? And then, yeah. But luckily, on this one, remember, Sebastian, I think it was you that noticed, on the paper two we graded last time, they didn't have the meters written here, and they took off a point if you didn't write it, and that really pissed me off. Made me very angry. Man, yeah, now good. So, this one has the meters there, but I was writing it in my working case, but I didn't end up needing it. Okay? Questions on 14? Other than the, how do you count the number of pieces of wood? Ruby, we're good? Are you sure? Okay. No questions? Not yet. All right. Circles. Oh, I hate my life. Okay. Compound shapes again. You just have to, the thing is, you just have to break those shapes apart into pieces you know. So when I look at this one, the first thing I see before I even read it I see a half of a circle and a rectangle. Do you see that, April? Like that's what you got to see. You got a half circle and a rectangle. Then you just got to read the words. They're written in English. It's nice. The semicircle of a diameter of six is cut from. Okay. Calculate the perimeter of the shaded area. So that'd be this, right? Like here, 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 like this, right? That's the part I have to do that I outlined in green. Okay, so when I look at it, I got 6 plus 6 plus 8 for sure. Right, but are we okay so far? Like, like the obvious part, for sure, for sure. And then look, if this is 6 and that's 8, how far is this? 1, and this is 1. 2 total. You know what I almost did is I almost did 2 twice. 
because I know the differences to them. There's two parts, so I almost did that. I've done that before. I do that mistake a lot. It's stupid, but I do it. All right. Now, how do you find this part? Mia, who should we call? To, who's going to tell us how to find this part? Mario. Hi, Mario. How do you find this part right here? So the circumference of the circle and divide by 2. How do you find the circumference of a circle? 2 pi r? Or diameter times pi? 2 pi r? 2 pi r. Why divide it by 2? Because it's half the circle. So, okay. And what is r? Say that again. r is 3. Because it's half of this. You could also, yeah, all right. You could do diameter anyway. So, so that's going to be plus 3 pi. Okay. And you add them all up and you get 31.4. We doing good? Okay. Let's see here. Check this out. Do you see right here where at the bottom where it says paper 21? You see that? You see that? Paper 21? Yeah. Uh, that means it's, I think that means it's a paper 2 problem. Yeah. But it could be a paper 1 problem. I'm not really sure. But like on the other pro on the other page, on page 11, you see how it says paper 2? That means that's a problem you will see. You will definitely see that kind of problem. Okay. Last page, is that right? And a lot of people had trouble with this one. It made me very sad panda. Maybe very sad panda. Like there's information in the words that you don't see on the picture on this problem, so you have to be very careful. Do you see how it says that uh, POQ, POQ is 50, but this ROS is 30? So that means that each of these are 10 degrees remaining, right? On each side, do you see that? Okay. Calculate the shaded area. Oh boy. Do you see that's a big circle and a little circle? Yeah. And this is, the, the shaded area is 50 degrees out of the full circle. Jesse, do you see how I got this 50 out of 360? Because that's this part. And then times pi r squared. Pi is, what is pi for the big circle? Oh, not pi, sorry, radius. Oh my gosh. 125. Oh my gosh. I hate when this happens. Do you see that the picture doesn't match the problem? What's that? Yeah, that's a really good question. Man, I, I didn't even recognize that. I didn't even see that. So the question is, what do you do when you, when you have this? Because this might happen when you take your test this year. Yeah. I mean, look, this is a, they do, but there's so, it's hard to find all these little mistakes. Like, it's, it's, it's hard to make, it's hard to write these tests. So what I would do is I just make sure I show my work very carefully. Because I imagine when they're grading it, they're going to realize, oh, crap. <laughs> but if you show your work correctly, you're going to get the credit. Okay? So if you did this, yeah. Right. So if you did this. Wait, what are you going to subtract? Is it going to be... Like that, right? That's how you find it? This could be 12, or it could be 125. It looks like it should be 12, not 125. But, yeah. Okay. And then the perimeter. The perimeter, let's call it 12, so... The perimeter of P O R S O Q P. P O R. Wait. So the perimeter is this. Right? Mm -hmm. Piece of pizza with a little piece of pizza cut out of the middle of the big piece of pizza. <laughs> so the perimeter of the shaded area, basically, right? Okay. So the. You know you have to have 12 and 12 and 6 and 6, right? So you know you're going to have 12 plus 12 plus 6 plus 6. But then you have to have these curvy parts. 
the thing is, you have to recognize, Jesse, you have to recognize these curves are parts of circumferences. So this one, this one right here would be 30 out of 360 times the circumference, which would be 2 times pi times 6, 2 pi i. And this one would be 50 out of 360 times 2 times pi times, let's call it 12. So you have to add these two together. Oh, sorry, you couldn't see what I was writing. I apologize. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, Jesse. You know, since we're actually talking about distances, decimals, especially since we're talking about centimeters, distance, um, decimals make good sense. Yeah. All right. How'd you guys do? Good. Yeah? Yeah? 47. 47. Whoa, that took the whole period. Well, you have the paper three, you have the paper two, you have the paper, or the unit three, yeah, so. Yeah, unit three, sorry. There is, but yeah, we don't do those.